Hi, my name is Riley Marlowe, and the ingredient that I chose for this project was cauliflower. I love cauliflower, and I was able to find it in a foreign dish uh, as instructed, and it was super delicious. I'll introduce that later, but let's get on to the history and culture. Cauliflower can be dated back to 600 BC, originally being found in Asia Minor. It made its way to North America in the 1600s on ships, and today most U.S. cauliflower farms are found in California. Um, something modern and political that I found concerning cauliflower was that U.S. Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez said in an interview that cauliflower is colonial um, when it comes to public garden spaces in New York. So she was trying to set up garden spaces and she believed that more culturally familiar plants to the city should be grown to the um, things that would appeal more to the immigrants that originally came here, such as yucca or plantains. Um, it's an interesting take, just something political that I found online. History and culture continued. Religiously, Hindus do seem to consume more amounts of cauliflower. Many identify as vegans, um, as the Vedas instructs not to kill useful animals. And then I cited where that was found in their holy book. Um, and so I thought that was an interesting religious connection that cauliflower can have. And then cauliflower is also considered a market staple in Mexico culturally. And meals such as cauliflower rice, roasted cauliflower, and fried cauliflower are commonly consumed dishes there, um, just showing that it's a huge part of their daily um, consumption. Next, we have the nutrient composition of cauliflower. Um, this is packed with nutrients. So we can see one serving has 25 calories, zero grams of fat, five grams of carbohydrates, two grams of fiber, two grams of sugar, two grams of protein. Um, and so one serving of it contains 100% of your recommended daily intake of vitamin C and 25% of your daily vitamin K. So you get a lot out of just a single serving of this. Small amounts of calcium, magnesium, potassium, and iron can all be found inside of cauliflower. So you're getting a ton of benefits. Relationship to diseases, cauliflower has been traced uh, to have unique antioxidants that have been shown to reduce inflammation and protect against several diseases, including cancer and heart disease, um, which is really wonderful. And I feel like it's super easy to integrate into diets if somebody were to be struggling with these issues, addressing the quality. According to experts, cauliflower heads should be firm and tightly closed. While cauliflower now comes in many colors, white heads of it should be pale and not possess any dark spots. So that's just going back to the original color and identifying it and soft or dark heads of cauliflower, you can see to the left, there's a little spot there and that indicates impending spoilage. And so if you see the grocery store, you should not pick that up. Agricultural information. Uh, we can see the seasonality. Peak cauliflower season is September through November. So it likes uh, warmer summer climates. Um, however, it is never found to be unavailable, at least in American grocery stores. They do strategic growing and storing to make sure that it, you have access to it year round. Sustainability wise, cauliflower is generally sustainable and most people are typically not uh, allergic to it. Um, they are, it's pretty in common. With the increase in pesticides and GMOs, however, this has become a threat to animal lives as it pollutes water sources. Um, those pesticides and things like that will flow downstream into their water sources or into their grass or grains of food. Um, and it is causing a lot of issues amongst animals. Um, and while this is not everywhere, worker exploitation can be found in relation to the production of cauliflower. Um, but unfortunately, that is something we face with a lot of different crops and goods. My dish that I tried with some friends uh, was alu gobi from Sitar. Um, an Indian restaurant. It was really amazing, actually. I had never really chosen a vegan dish at an Indian food restaurant, so I thoroughly enjoyed it. thought it was delicious. It was cauliflower and potatoes with spices and a sauce. The spices were balanced and rich. Um, as someone from Houston, I've tried a lot of good Indian food. However, I felt that Sitar's dish was definitely able to compete um, with the locals that I'm used to. This dish appears to be typically served over rice culturally. That is how I ate it. One of my favorite things to do, however, uh, with these kinds of dishes is dip my non bread. Cannot confirm that is a cultural norm, but it is something that I tend to do and very much enjoy. Social and cultural perspectives. Culturally, I thought it was cool. The menu at Sitar contained many vegetarian options, which Alu Gobi was no. 
exception to this made the meal so hearty and filling um, I did not feel like I was sacrificing a protein or like my hunger by choosing a vegan dish um, with a starch and a vegetable instead when it comes to American food uh, or at least in the past, it felt like going allergen-free, vegetarian, or vegan, that you had to sacrifice like flavor and texture, but the Indian population uh, has not let that become a problem for them. They continue to serve delicious meals, even, um, even vegetarian. I'm thankful they offer varying degrees of spice level. I'm sure the traditional Indian family would favor the spicy, but I decided mild would be my best option as my spice tolerance is not extremely high. Um, so I was very thankful for that. And here are my references. Um, I have both um, websites and images cited here. Sweet, thank you so much for uh, going on this cornflower adventure with me. This was super fun uh, and super delicious.